Bible Church. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Today is yet another day, right? So let's praise God together. Here we go. The presence of the Lord is here. The presence of the Lord is here. See, I feel him in the atmosphere. The presence of the Lord is here. Oh, Lord. The presence of the Lord is here. The Spirit of the Lord is here. The Spirit of the Lord is right here. See, I feel him in the atmosphere. The Spirit of the Lord is here. Oh, the Spirit of the Lord is here. Listen, the power of the Lord is here. The power of the Lord. Can you feel him in the atmosphere? Yeah. The power of the Lord is here. Hey, the power of the Lord is here. Come on, y'all.
my window and pour you out a blast of faith. And if you lost stuff, he'll provide everything you need. Healing, power, and victory. So it's all up to you. Whatever you come to do, just lift your hands and praise the Lord. You can bless him too. I can't. is in fact the response of the United States of America long overdue. I get this call from a dear friend. He said, man, you know, we got a bad sister in Evanston and she's pushing the reparations question strong. Because the black community for the nation. And so it was Alderman Simmons. You have become the visible face and the driving force of the Evanston Reparation Initiative. Some mornings I wake up and I feel like, wow, I'm a part of history. This is special. And then it's intimidating at the same time, because what if you don't get it right? The greatest hurdle is the political will to make it happen. And Alderman Simmons made it happen, gathering a lot of evidence, specifically implicating actions of the city. This program, as it is, is incomplete. I, I don't know why they would be given more status than any other group of people. People have been extremely nasty to me. You don't give them money and then tell them what they can do with it. You cannot say my grandfather back. He's dead. Give us what we're due. I don't think it's going to go too far or anywhere. I'm still not prepared to join an insurrection. I just want you to understand who we are. We in Evanston are leading the way to heal a nation. We don't want a piece of freedom. We want the whole package, and that's reparations. We want to welcome everyone to St. James on this Martin Luther King Jr. weekend. Uh, where the theme is reparations now. That's the theme uh, that the Kansas City chapter of SCLC has been uh, promoting all week, reparations now. So I want to welcome you. And in welcoming you, I, I want to welcome you like this. Uh, this past uh, week, I was in Houston for a conference. I went to a fancy restaurant and the waiter without saying anything, brought this big plate of bread and just put it on the table. So I asked what any of you all would ask. I said, uh, is this free? <laughs> I mean, it's the next question, right? He said, yes, we give this to all of our guests. It is free, so I said, what any of you all would say. You might as well bring another plate because this one <laughs> is going to be gone. But they give bread to all their guests as a way to tell them 
you are welcome here. And I want you to know at St. James, we give all of our guests some bread, but it's a different kind of bread. Not the bread that you put on a table. It's the bread of life. Jesus said, this bread, once you have it, you don't go hungry. And so we welcome you to all the free bread you can handle. And we're glad that you're joining us here for worship today. God has been tested. We know that God is true because God has been tried. We're going to start off today asking who's on the Lord's side. Test them. Praise the Lord, everybody. Listen, there's a scripture in Exodus 32. Moses had just got back from the mountain of God. Aaron and Israel had made earrings and idols. And Moses said, I want to know who's on the Lord's side. He said, come on. I want you to take a stand. If you're on the Lord's side, come this way. And if there's anybody that came to church this morning that can say that I'm on the Lord's side, I want you to just stand up and clap your hands if you're glad that you're on the Lord's side. You've been running and running, running for a long time. Your time is winding up, better make up your mind. It's getting late in the evening, sun is going down. You better get it right, get it right, while you may be found. I want to know who's on the Lord's side. Come on, say it like you mean it. Who's on the Lord's side. Say, where do you stand? Who's on the Lord's side? Who's on the Lord's side? I'm on, I'm on. I'm on. I see you in the balcony. The Lord's side. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hey. I'm on, I'm on. Come on, say it. The Lord's side. The Lord's side. You've been running and running. <laughs> Running for a long time Your time is winding up You better make up your mind It's getting late in the evening Sun is going down You better get it right, get it right While you may be found I want to know where you stand I feel you, come on Who's on the Lord's side? Say, where do you stand? You got to work, <laughs> work while it's day, for the night is coming, and you can't find your way, oh sinner, oh sinner, what will you do, you better choose today, cause tomorrow's not promised to you, I want to know, who's on the Lord's side, where do you stand, Oh, my God. 
Luther King was a true follower of Christ. How do we know? Dr. King stood up for the poor, stood up for the homeless, stood up for the oppressed. He worked to open doors for equal access to, for all people. He was willing to give his life for that cause. The altar of the Lord is open today to all who want to come because God through Jesus Christ removed the veil so that everyone can be free to see God. We can develop our own relationship. So it's so good to know that the creator of the heavens and the earth cares about me. My ups, my downs, my joys, my faults, my struggles. Our God is, is, is an awesome God. Won't you come? Won't you come? The altar is now open. Creator God, we love you. We lift you up, oh God. 
We thank you for this day, oh God. We thank you for breath, oh God, each and every day, Lord. We thank you for the ability to inhale and exhale each day, oh God. We recognize that when we wake up, oh God, we are in miracle territory. So we say thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Lord, we thank you, God, for being all in all. We thank you for being Jehovah Rapha, Jehovah Jireh, and Jehovah Shalom, oh God. We thank you. Lord, we thank you for your presence on today, oh God, and each and every day, oh God. We thank you for your Holy Spirit. We thank you for grace and for mercy, oh God. We thank you, oh God, for the ability to dream, God, as we dream, oh Lord, for a new day, a day where we can go before each other and say, there's nothing but peace. We dream, oh God, oh day for the day that the violence ends, oh God. Yes, we dream, oh God, for the day that, that, that the homelessness and the housing is more affordable, oh God. We dream, oh God, for the day, Lord, and we cast our cares unto you, oh God. For we know that you will take them, oh God, for you care for us, Lord. And we thank you in advance, oh Lord, as we cast the care of anxiety, oh God, that you will give us peace as we cast the care of suicidal ideations, oh God, that we bind and rebuke in the name of Jesus, that you will take control of our mind and give us a sound mind, oh God. We thank you, oh God, for the ability to continue to dream, Lord. We thank you, oh God, for the ability to dream of nothing but joy in our lives, oh God. We dream of glory manifesting all around us on a day-to-day -day basis, oh God. We just say thank you. We lift you up, Lord. We dream that we can continue to love you even more, to love you even more, to love our neighbor, oh God, as we love ourselves, oh God. We dream for sisterhoods and brotherhoods, oh Lord, all over the world. As wars are taking place, Lord, we pray for peace. We pray for peace all over the world, Lord. We pray for our leaders in our countries, and we pray for our leaders in our churches and companies and corporations, oh God. Give them your wisdom. Give them your wisdom, Lord, to know when to turn right, when to turn left, oh God, and when to move forward, and when to let things go. Lord, help us to move in love on a day-to-day -day basis. We lift you up, oh God, as we pray, and we dream of a new day, that we all come together, and we just say, hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. hallelujah. in Jesus' name, amen. And before I leave, uh, we dream and we give thanks for our members, Alex and Alice Ellison, who have been married for 57 years. We dream of those kinds of things. Amen? Amen. You may be seated. What is it about the Negro? I mean, every other group that came as an immigrant somehow, not easily, but somehow got around it. Is it just the fact that Negroes are black? White America must see that no other ethnic group has been a slave on American soil. Uh, that is one thing that other immigrant groups haven't had to face. The other thing is that the color became a stigma. American society made the Negroes' color a stigma. America freed the slaves in 19, I mean 1863 through the Emancipation Proclamation of Abraham Lincoln, but gave the slaves no land or nothing in reality, as a matter of fact, to, to get started on. At the same time, 
America was giving away millions of acres of land in the West and the Midwest, which meant that there was a willingness to give the white peasants from Europe an economic base. And yet it refused to give its black peasants from Africa who came here involuntarily in chains and had worked free for 244 years in a kind of economic base. And so emancipation for the Negro was really freedom to hunger. It was freedom uh, to the winds and rains of heaven. It was freedom without food to eat or land to cultivate. And therefore, it was freedom and famine at the same time. And when white Americans tell the Negro to lift himself by his own bootstraps, they don't, oh, they don't look over the legacy of slavery and segregation. I believe we ought to do all we can and seek to lift ourselves by our own bootstrap. But uh, it's a cruel jest to say to a bootless man that he ought to lift himself by his own bootstraps. And many Negroes, about thousands and millions, have been left bootless as a result of all of these years of oppression and as a result of a society that deliberately made its color a stigma and something worthless in the grave. Good morning, St. James family and friends. Good morning. It is a blessing to have you here with us this morning. We do have special guests with us that we do want to recognize that is important to us here at St. James and in our community. First of all, we have Congressman Emmanuel Cleaver II with us today. Praise God. Amen. One of our own. And we do have one of our own, Mayor Pro Tem, Raina Park Shaw, is here with us today. Amen. And our other distinguished guests from HUD, we are blessed. Deke and your team that are here, thank you so very much. We're also grateful for the sisterhood of Delta Sigma Theta for coming out to support one of their own this morning to support your sisterhood. God bless you. Well, if you know me, you know what time it is, St. James family and friends. It's what? It's giving time. Amen. Dr. King's dream was rooted in the principles of justice, equality, and love. His tireless efforts towards achieving civil rights for all Americans and commitment to nonviolence activism have left an indelible mark on our nation's history. As a church community, we take this opportunity to honor and celebrate the profound impact Dr. King's vision. Yesterday, here at St. James, we had Freedom Store. Over 250 members of the community that are considered the least, the lost, the abandoned and forgotten were fed, clothed yesterday and left with boots, coats, hats, toiletry items, and food. St. James, thank you for living out Dr. Clean, Dr. King's dream, where we connect people with God in practical ways. The tithing scripture today is from Proverbs 9, 17. It says, and please join me, whoever is kind to the poor lends to the Lord and we will be repaid in full. That's good news, sisters and brothers. Repaid in full, God is so good. I'm Dr. Yvette Richards and I am blessed to be the Director of Community Connections and Mission and Hospitality here at this place called St. James. So there's many ways that we have for you to give. We have our ushers here that have envelopes and we'll pass the plate shortly. If you need an envelope, you can raise your hand and they'll bring you. But if you're at home, you warm and toasty, the Chiefs have already won, so you don't have to worry about what's on the game today. You can go ahead and give. Go to your giving tab, drop down, add a little extra today, because we won. All right, and make sure you hit enter. So now, for those that have their phones, you can either have an Android like me, or those iPhone people, we love you still. Please do text to give. You can text 77977 to SJUMC, or you can mail it in. So if you're at home or on vacation, if you're sitting by the beach somewhere, go ahead and pull out an envelope and say to St. James, attention finance, 5540 Wayne Avenue, 
Kansas City, Missouri, 64110. St. James, you know what time it is. It's giving time. You're in the hands of the ushers. Come on, put your hands on it. The simple song says, I really love you. Because I'm sure. Because you first loved me. I really love you. Here we go. I really love you. I really love you. Because you first loved me. I really love you. Yes, I do. I really love you. I really love you. Do, 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 do. I really love you. Come on, help us sing it. Because you first. Because you first love me. I really, I really love you. Yes, Let's I do that do. again. I really love you. Put your hands on the choir. I really love you. I really love you. Because you first. Because you first love me. Come on. I really love I you. I really love you. Yes, I do. Here we go. How can you love me? Yeah. Knowing all the things I've done. Yeah. And then you show me when you gave your only son. I really love you. Love you, yes I do. How can you? How can you love me? Knowing all the things I've done, and then you show me. You show me when you gave me your only I son. Really, I really love you. I really love. I really love you, yes I do. You are the air. You are the air I breathe. Come on, and you are the sun. Come on, help me sing it. Here we go. I will. 
Chiefs uh, win. Uh, on last night, that is so nice. Um, I believe that uh, God still moves, makes things uh, happen, and uh, I served as chair of the Congressional Black Caucus. I was blessed to, to do that. Uh, and so it is, it is a, a, not a, an easy job because you're dealing with people who uh, all uh, are well known and all are seasoned politicians. And in, in some cases, like when I got there, uh, Charlie Rangel, legendary people, um, were there in, in, uh, in Congress, and so it's a difficult uh, job to have. Uh, but it's also uh, a job that the caucus is very careful about uh, giving uh, over its uh, power to uh, one single individual who will represent them, and a speaker received that anointment uh, from leaders from all over this country. Um, in the second, first chapter of Luke, second, seventh verse, are some amazing words um, that you've probably read many times, maybe didn't think much about it. But it said, in the fullness of time, God brought forth his only begotten son in the fullness of time. Time became pregnant. And the pregnancy was brought forth in the fullness of time. Now, uh, that means when everything was ready. Uh, this is ancient phraseology in the fullness of time. Uh, it, mean, it means as planned, as planned, when the best time occurred. And I still believe that God does that uh, in the fullness of time. I um, believe that President Obama, for example, could not have been elected at any other time except that moment, at that moment, as President of the United States, time was full. And I think in the fullness of time, and I was not in support of the fullness of time when it happened, but some of my close friends, Jim Clyburn, Benny Thompson, Cedric Richmond, members of Congress, they wanted our speaker today to become the Secretary of Agriculture. I didn't say anything, these are my friends. It's, we dinner together, we, we like each other. We, I wanted 
I was speaking to be the secretary of the committee that I served on. More specifically, as the chair of the Housing and Insurance Committee, I wanted this person they're trying to get Biden to appoint as agriculture secretary to be right there on the issues that we have to deal with. Why? Because in the fullness of time, we have unparalleled homelessness in the fullness of time, affordable and decent housing has never been in need at a greater moment than this. In the fullness of time, God tends to make stuff happen. God is, God is a tricky fellow. I tell people all the time, you be careful, God is tricky. In the fullness of time. In the fullness of time, God decided that maybe a Delta Sigma Theta person ought to be Secretary of HUD. In the fullness of time, somebody who had served as a mayor, Warrenville, Ohio, in the fullness of time, God wanted somebody who was tough enough and then tender enough to deal with the issues that America has been struggling with for years, in the fullness of time. And so I was thrilled uh, to see that the president didn't take my advice, but he chose on his own <laughs> to point our speaker as 44th, who had been the 44th member of our delegation to become the Secretary of Housing and Urban uh, Development. Now, let me tell you, I had already preserved her to be in that, that uh, position. Uh, you have the evidence there, I, the, my photograph. China has been a thorn in our back. The second largest military in the world. The second largest economy in the world. They are now trying to develop a whole arsenal of intercontinental ballistic missiles. And so when we were in China, on the Great Wall, I was not going to allow the Chinese to do anything to the chair of the Congressional Black Caucus. I organized a force of men, <laughs> Donald Payne of New Jersey, Andre Carson of, Indiana, uh, of Indianapolis, and myself. We put on our armament. We were not going to allow the Chinese to do anything to our chair. We protected her on the Great Wall of China. And so you can understand how proud and pleased I am that the Secretary of the United States House Housing and Urban Development Secretary has come to St. James on Martin Luther King Eve. After the choir, Secretary of HUD, Marsha Fudge.
come on choir. The song says, I do, I do worship. Oh, I really do.
my good and faithful friend. Thank you, Emmanuel. And to his better half and my better friend, Diane, it's nice to see you this morning as well. Thank you all for having me for your Martin Luther King Jr. service. To my sisters, in anticipation of seeing you today, I did bring a red jacket so we can take some pictures after service. To my team, I want my HUD team to please stand up so you can see the team that is here with me today. I thank all of you. You know, I'm from cold country. I'm from Ohio. It is even cold to me. And so I thank you for coming out this morning. Uh, Administrator Cl Claiborne and all your team, thank you. It is my honor to be with you today to celebrate and commemorate the life and the legacy of Dr. Martin Luther King. I've studied Dr. King since I was a student in high school. I've looked at his works and his teachings, uh, and I tried to understand why he was such a revered and beloved leader. I read one of his sermons, and it kind of came clear to me because he addressed what he believed were the three dimensions of a complete life. He talked about its length, its breadth, and its height. In it, he says that the length of life is not about how long it lasts, but an inward concern for one's own welfare, taking care of yourself. He talked about the push of life forward to achieve its personal ends and ambitions, meaning your personal preparation to live a good life, your foundation for where you go, for what you do, for how you succeed. He said that the breath of life is about the outward concern for the welfare of others. And the height of life is the upward reach toward God. I'm going to focus on the breath of life, what we are doing to make the lives of other people better. Like Dr. King, Emmanuel Cleaver exemplifies the breath of life every day through his faith. Everyone on Capitol Hill knows and respects him. He goes out of his way to lead, to guide, to protect, to counsel, and to console. His life, like that of Dr. King, is what Mona Lake Jones might say is a story worth telling. Through faith, both he and Dr. King sacrificed, but they gave their full measure. Even through adversity, they continued to give. And I say to you, if everything is going right in your life, just live long enough. And you'll find that it takes real strength to continue to give, even when you're in pain, which I know he is today. Thank you, my friend. Thank you so very, very much. Let's give Emmanuel another hand. <laughs> Dr. King truly believed that the faith of a mustard seed could move mountains. He was unafraid. It was his calling. It was his mission, his responsibility to show the way, to speak for those who had no voice. What is your calling? What is your mission? How do we fulfill our own charge? How do we meet our promise and make the lives of those around us better? That is the breath of life. So many holidays we just use as excuses to take a day off work. But the King holiday demands more. It calls for reflection, action, and most importantly, it calls for service. Dr. King said that the true measure of a man is not where he stands in times of comfort and convenience, but where he stands in times of challenge and controversy. We are in times of challenge and controversy. We live in a time where lies become commonplace, where truth matters not, 
Courts matter not, where division and hate and racism still rule the day. It is as if we are going backwards in this society. We are fighting the same battles that our parents fought. Anytime you can have people who you know are lying, who you know mean you no good, and people still want to support them, I am confused. Anytime you decide that because you don't like what is going on, you can opt out. You cannot opt out of life. I'm not going to be a bench sitter. Don't opt out. Do what you can to make people's lives better and to tell the truth. One of the things I know is that our steps really are ordered. So Dr. King's message was that in order to live a full life, we must love God, we must love ourselves, and we must love our neighbors. Now I have no question that all of us in this room love God. It's one degree outside, and you're in church. If that is not love, I don't know what is. But because you love the Lord, I hope you love yourself as he loved you. We are all worthy of love, especially self-love, no matter our circumstance. Circumstances are temporary. Circumstances change. So we need to do what we can do to help those who society leaves behind. We have a, a real responsibility, a moral obligation to treat every person, no matter how rich or poor, with dignity and respect and grace. You know, the people that I serve at HUD are amongst the most vulnerable people in this country. People without homes, low-income people, the last, the lost, and the left out. They are my people, Emmanuel. I know that I am where God wants me to be. I'm clear on that. I shouldn't have been at AG. I'm where I'm supposed to be right now. When you see what I see every day, it is hard not to understand why I am where I am, because these really are my people. I come from a very, very large family, and uh, I have people in every walk of life. My uncle used to say about some of my cousins, he used to say, he'd rather see the devil and all his helpers than to see him coming. <laughs> because those, you know, we got all kind of people. You know, I was literally, I was sitting in the office one day, and my cousin called and said, don't answer the phone. Junior just robbed the bank again. <laughs> so, so we got, you know, so everybody got them. I just have more of them because I got a big family. We all got them. I have a lot of family that lives in public housing. I've seen it and known it all of my life. <laughs> I just tell the truth. Yeah. Uh, but I need you to understand where we are today. And Emmanuel mentioned it just briefly. Were you aware that even though black people only make up 13% of the population of the United States, we are almost 40% of all of the people who are homeless in this country? Half of all homeless families on the streets are black. More of the newly homeless people in this country, and it just hurts me to my heart, are black women over the age of 55. Because of high housing costs, black and brown people who are struggling just to keep a roof over their head. And on top of that, we have to deal with the systemic racism, the persistent discrimination in housing to keep us from getting ahead, from landlords who refuse to rent with vouchers to people having their homes devalued because of the color of their skin. I live in an all-black community by choice. I live two doors from an all-white community. My house is bigger than the house two doors from me. My house is better than the house two doors from me. My lot is bigger than the house two doors from me. But that house two doors from me is valued at $25,000 more than my house because I live in a black community. As Secretary of HUD, we're going to stop that. I promise you we will. We are already having negotiations with appraisers. You know, you can't be fair when your system is structured so that you devalue black people. You have an industry that is 95% white male 
who never even come to our communities and decide what it's worth. That's going to stop. We are at HUD knowing we have an awful lot of work to do. When I became secretary, we were in the darkest days of the pandemic. People were losing or had very little access to safe housing. Everything they could do to keep from getting sick was all they could do. But I knew that the president and vice president would let me do what I wanted to do because I would not have done it if they had not let me do what I knew needed to be done. They wanted me to show the people of this country that we care, to show that government can and should work for those who have the least, just like it works for those who have the most. In the last three years, we've helped more than two million families stay in their homes and avoid foreclosure. We have cut childhood poverty in half with $250 and $300 checks per month per child for a whole entire year until the other people decided it wasn't something that we should keep doing. We've expanded access to public benefits during the pandemic. We have helped hundreds of thousands of people with emergency rental assistance. We have forgiven more than one million people's student loan debt in this country, more than one million. We have removed barriers from people who have student loan debt if they are trying to buy a home. It used to be, before I came, that if you were applying for an FHA loan and you had student debt, they said you did debt, student debt, you didn't qualify. That's done. That's over. We've already changed that. And we've made it so that your rental history, positive rental history, will make you credit worthy. You know, before people would report and they'd say, I have no credit. But if you pay your rent on time for a full year, that's credit for us. We are confronting appraisal bias, and we are enforcing fair housing laws. We are making it so that people who have paid their debt to society really do get a fair shot at a second chance if they want to live in a home. We have supported developers of color so that we can build the houses we desperately need and build black wealth in the same process. We are addressing homelessness with care and compassion, not just by locking people up. We help people get the housing and services they need to change their circumstances. It matters to me that people know I care, that the government cares. It is the breath of life. Members of the HUD team may be called to inspect substandard housing or help a community hit by a disaster get the resources they need. Others are called to teach or counsel or to save lives. We are all called differently. But when your call comes, I'm asking you to answer. Jesus said to love thy neighbor as thyself. Amen. I cannot turn my back on those who need my help. The only way we will solve the challenges facing our world is by working together. It is on all of us to do our part to leave the world better than we found it, no matter how dark the day. Amanda Gorman writes, when day comes, we ask ourselves, where can we find light in this never-ending shade? But she goes on to say, there is always light. If only we are brave enough to see it. If only we are brave enough to be it. I need you to be the light. Dr. King was an extraordinary leader because of his extraordinary faith. St. James Church, I know there are plenty of reasons to feel weary about the state of our nation and our world today. But my faith reminds me that there is always a reason to hope. So let me encourage you today, a charge to keep I have, an eternal God to glorify, an immortal soul to provide for, needful duty to be done, our generation to serve. Do your part. And the one thing I ask you most is don't make everything in life about yourself. It is hard when all you focus on is what you have or what somebody has done for you. I have a 92-year-old mother. I want to make sure she has her Medicaid, her Social Security, all of the things that are important to me. I have nieces and nephews who are still in school. 
I want them to have decent schools. If it was just about me, I wouldn't need any of it. But we have to be our brother's keeper, our sister's keeper. So I'm just asking that you would stand for those who cannot stand, to be a voice for those with no voice, and just know that we have come this far by faith, leaning on the Lord, trusting in his mighty word, and he has never failed me yet. Amen. We want to praise God for uh, the word. And, uh, thank you, Secretary Fudge, for being with us here this morning. Uh, we want to extend the invitation, as always. Uh, where we are, we've come this far because God has brought us this far and will continue to move along because God will continue to move us along in this journey. We're going to open up the doors and extend the invitation, the first invitation. You have never made that step in your life to have a relationship with our Lord. Uh, God sent the very best in sending Jesus that we might have life everlasting. So if you've not made that step in your life, that profession, or you don't know what it means to be in relationship with the Lord, we'd love to walk with you on that journey. That's the first invitation, and we invite you to come down if you're here in this building. The second invitation, if you're looking for a church home, we would love to have you as a part of the St. James family. Uh, for those who are worshiping online, you can contact us. Uh, email care at sjumckc.org or call us 816-444-5588. The doors are open and we extend the invitation today. name of Jesus we pray. Amen.